हेलो फ्रेंड्स अगेन वार्म वेलकम टू फिश इज ओनली नरिशिंग फिश नर्चरिंग लाइफ एजुकेशनल यूट्यूब चैनल टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द बॉम्बे डक फिशरी एज वी नो द इंडियन फिशरीज दैट इज इंडियन मराइन फिशरी दैट इज कमर्शियल मराइन फिशरीज इज हैविंग मोस्ट इंपॉर्टेंट इन क्रिएटिंग आवर जी डी पी एज वेल एज इन बिल्डिंग आवर नेशन प्रोवाइडिंग न्यूट्रिशियस एंड डिलीशियस फूड फॉर द ह्यूमन बींग्स सो वो विल discuss bombay duck fisheries in this fisheries we are going to discuss the introduction then we are going to discuss the taxonomy in this we are going to discuss the classification and common names of the bombay duck then distribution of the bombay duck then we are going to cover the food and feeding habits of the juveniles then we will discuss next point that is the reproduction in reproduction we are going to discuss the maturity size at maturity that is minimum size at maturity what is fecundity fecundity means what and how much the fecundity of the bombay duck then we are going to discuss the spawning seasons after that the reproduction next one we are going to cover that is age and growth and after that we are going to discuss the fisheries actual fisheries of the bombay duck and then we are going to cover the crabs and gear mostly the crabs that is uh, uh vehicle platform which is uh, hold required to hold on water body that is crab that is boat nothing but the boat and other platforms used to capture the fish that crabs and gears that is the nets which are capturing devices to capture the bombay duck fishery we are going to discuss and after that after capturing after crafts and gear we will discuss the disposal of the bombay duck the fish let's start the bombay duck fisheries first we will discuss the taxonomy bombay duck it comes under the phylum chordata then class actinoptergi that is the red fin fishes order physostomy family scopelidae sub family harpodontidae that is the bombay ducks bombay ducks are coming and are sub family harpodontidae then genus harpodon and species is nihiris and cumosus that is the two species are are uh, occurring in uh, indian resources in the water resources and it is locally called as in english it is called as a bombay duck it is mostly fishery is uh, prominent to the mumbai which is previously known as a bombay on that the fish is also known as a bombay duck fish that is bombay duck is a fish having no legs and in marathi it is called as a bombay this one is a bombay duck fish that is a sketchable diagram line diagram of this and this is the photo of the bombay duck that is in fresh condition it is look like a like and it is a very gelatinous fish having large mouth and somewhat a grayish brownish gray color that is the taxonomy just in phylum chordata class actinoptergi that is ray fin fishes and order physostomy family scopelidae sub family harpodontidae genus harpodon and species h nehris harpodon nehris and harpodon cumosus these are the taxonomy of the bombay duck now we will discuss the description that is uh, external feature the identification characters of the bombay duck how we can identify the bombay ducks the body of bombay duck is elongate see how it is the elongated body it is slender body it is mostly elongated body and slender body it is a soft fish it is very gelatinous in appearance it is a very soft fish compressed and gelatinous in appearance this one is the bombay duck body is reported to be phosphorescent in fresh condition in fish 
exhibit phosphorism in fresh condition so we can easily identify it will be like a glittering in a water body that is it is a peculiar characters in fresh condition that is phosphorism condition present head also see head is large head the bombay duck having a large head and eyes are very small eyes are small snout is very short and we can see here is a snout is there and it is a very small here we can see snout is a very small snout mouth is having very wide mouth that is gap of the mouth is also very wide then cleft of the mouth is very deep we can see this is the cleft how much uh, that is cleft is there that is large cleft is there depth uh, depth also mouth is very wide and snout is very small lower jaw is a very strong or prominent and longer than the upper jaws lower jaw is prominent and upper or larger or longer than the upper jaws thus we can see here then bands of unequal recovered depressible teeth in jaws especially in large and facet in lower jaws the teeth here are curved unequal in size and depressible teeth occurring in the bombay ducks dorsal fin this one is a dorsal fin is situated in between the snout and root of the caudal fin here is a caudal fin and here is the snout in this dorsal between is situated mid ventrally in the between midway of the snout and caudal fins that is the peculiarity of dorsal fins dorsal fin is, dorsal fin is situated midway between the snout and root of the caudal fin with 11 to 12 rays this is the dorsal fin which is situated in midway in between the snout and the root of the caudal fin followed by the cosphaceous adipose fin that is a small adipose fin or we can see here this one is a small adipose fin that is the second dorsal fin which is a rudimentary in form and form the adipose fin that is after the first dorsal fin this one is first dorsal fin caudal fin trilobed first lobe second lobe and third lobe that is in between middle there is a one lobe that is trilobed caudal fin then pectoral fin with 10 to 12 rays longer than the head length pectoral fin is uh, having 10 to 10 rays longer than head length here we can see this one is a pectoral fin and which is longer than the head length pelvic fins very long with nine rays this one is a pelvic fin this one is a pelvic fin which is very long with nine rays scales comments opposite to the origin of dorsal fin here we can see the scales which is started opposite of the dorsal fin and in which is mostly concentrated after the origin of the dorsal fin lateral line tubules phosphorus with 40 to 44 scales here is a lateral line here we can see the uh, 40 to 44 scale numbers extending on to pointed median lobe the caudal fin this is present in between the median lobe the caudal fin color of the bombay duck is a brownish to grayish semi transparent in appearance that is bombay duck is mostly brownish to grayish in color which is semi transparent and gelatinous in appearance transparent in appearance these are the 
peculiar characteristics of the bombadil now we will discuss the distribution bombadil is a worldwide distributed from zanzibar to china see and histories of india east pakistan barma and tracks of malacca he is bombadil having a wide distribution wide worldwide in india it occurs in a large quantities on west coast in gulf of kutch and gulf of kambe in gujarat and along the kokan coast of maharashtra particularly in kolaba and thane districts these are the distribution in india it is mostly occurring large quantity on west coast only that is 98% of the catch quantity catch catches of the bombay duck are from the west coast and from mostly from the gulf of kutch and gulf of kambe in gujarat and along from the kokan coast that is particularly in kolaba and thane districts these are the distributions on the east coast it is uh, taken in small numbers up to only 2% we can uh, uh, catching the catches fetching the catches from the east coast of the bombadil along mostly in coromandel coast in appropriate quantities along in andhra and odisha coast and in issues of the west bengal we can observe this bombadil Bombay duck has a discontinuous distributions of fishery may be due to the this is the peculiar features that is discontinuation in distribution we can observe in a bombay duck due to the some surface temperature of may be affecting or some food and feeding habits or feeding grounds and feeding materials may be responsible for that that is for the discontinuous distribution of the bombadil now we will see the food and feeding habit of the bombadil first we will see the food for juveniles and then we will discuss the food for the adults juvenile is a small fish it is a stage of the fish up to the juvenile after that the juvenile the fish will become the adult that is early in life the juvenile fish requires the early stages of juvenile food consist of only prawns mostly it consist of prawns as the growth progress the prawn diet is supplemented with fish and then if juvenile is progressing growing and it will be slowly converted its diet to converted to the fish previously up to the juvenile it is mostly uh, preferring the prawn in their diet as the fish grows the clupids up to 16% of the food while the percent of the prawn varies between 74 to 78 when the adult stage is reached they constitute about 37.8 to 45 percent is respectively that is we can see the in adults prawn percentage adults food the prawn percentage near about 37 to 45 percent and in juveniles it is mostly about 74 to 78 percent that is the prawns are prefer by the bombadils now adult we will discuss the food and feeding of the adults the fish is a indiscriminate foraceous carnivorous and cannibalistic feeders that is bombay duck is a indiscriminate foraceous feeders it is a carnivorous fish mostly feeds on prawns and other fishes and it is having a characteristics like a cannibalistic also that is they can eat they can capture they can consume whole species whole species they can consume other bombadil that is same species can be uh, eaten by the bombadil that is cannibalistic feeders it does not show 
preference for any particular type of food but feed only fishes and crustaceans that is the bombay duck not giving any preference for the food but mostly preferring or mostly containing the food as a fish and prawns that is mostly crustaceans and fishes the wide gap of mouth as already said here is a wide mouth of gau wide mouth of mouth and elongated lower jaw the fish swallow the large side prey these large mouth gap and this long jaw allows to fish to capture large size fishes and to eat the teeth of the both jaws are thin and we already seen it is curved teeth which prevent the prey from escaping from the mouth these are the food and feeding habit of the fish instances are also known where bombay duck of 210 mm long has a 250 mm tricuspid in its stomach see this is a how much voracious and carnivorous fish the bombay duck length of the fish is 210 mm and he, he eaten a fish of 250 mm that is the scientists observe the tricuspid that is the ribbon fish in bombay ducks gut of 250 mm that is small fish eating larger fish also that is that is in stomach now we will discuss the reproduction in reproduction the sexes of the bombay ducks are separate and there is a no hermaphrodite polism are observed in bombay duck that is two sexes are not present in the same individual we cannot observe till the hermaphrodism in a bombay duck there are also no secondary sexual characters are observed in bombay duck as it is very difficult to observe the bombay duck male and female externally with the secondary sexual characters now we will discuss the maturity in male the testes is differentiated we can observe the testes with the male when we reach the the size of 170 mm long then only we have to observe the testes in the male in a female the hoa first time differentiated when the female reaches the length of 120 to 140 mm thus the minimum size at first maturity in female is about 200 mm the minimum size of first maturity is a 200 mm in a female in a bombay duck some workers also reported the 200 to 210 mm and 240 mm also now we will discuss the fecundity fecundity is a nothing but the number of ova as produced by an individual fish individual bombay duck in a particular spawning season or year that is called as a fecundity that is nothing but the number of eggs produced by the fish or female that is called as fecundity in a uh, bombay duck the female of size is ranging from 2 to 29 to 318 mm size which is producing ova of 14600 to 146000 that the early mature fishes are unable to produce a large number of ova as it is reproductive system is not much uh, stronger it is just uh, mature and uh, able to produce the ova and that ova size also somewhat uh, less uh, smaller than the um, all well mature fishes or aged age fishes now we will discuss the spawning seasons it has been assumed that the species is a continuous breeder with intense activity from october to april and slack from the may to september though it is a continuous breeder the intense quantity of spawning is occur in october to april the individual spawn twice a year though the breeding season extends particularly throughout the year 
and eight so having a twice year it can uh, breeds the pomatic breeds with intensively throughout the year there is a we can also the sex ratio of the uh, male female ratio in the catches of the bombay duck it is also very the sex ratio between two sexes that is male and female is found to be fluctuating during the various month of the year in a bombay duck fisheries or bombay duck catches the male predominant in a catches in the monsoon month of july and august but from september to make the females are more dominant overall catches show the females are predominant that is number of the females in catches are more in commercial catches the ratio being 100 males and 171 females that is the overall females are more dominant in numbers that is sex ratio that is the females are more in the catches now we will see the age and growth of the fish in first year the bombay duck attained a size of 50 mm in size in second year it attained 150 mm in third year it attained 230 mm and in fourth year it attained 290 mm that is the size of the fish they can uh, got in first year second year third and fourth year that is from 50 year in first year 150 mm in second year 1 to 30 mm in third year and 290 mm in first year that is the age of the uh, and growth of the fishes in the form of length now we will discuss the fishery of the bombay duck that is the bombay duck is a very uh, tasty as well as delicious fish which is consumed in a fresh condition as well as after drying that is uh, we can know that dried bombils are available in the market and all are distributed to the inland regions of the India also along the both coast it is supported by a single species that is Bombay duck fishery is mostly supported by the single species that is Harpoda nevis that is the, the two species are occurring in India that is Harpoda nevis and Harpoda spumosa out of them the mostly supported fisheries by the Harpoda nevis Harpoda nevis is uh, most important uh, fish which is uh, having more percentage that is up to 98 percent it got in a uh, commercial catches Bombay duck fishery forming major fishery along the Maharashtra and Gujarat coast that is state together these two state together contribute about 98 percent of the total Bombay duck fishery that is total Bombay duck fishery out of that 98 fishery or catches come from the Gujarat and Maharashtra from the west coast only and remaining are two percent which is come from the Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and West Bengal that is the rest 2% catches are reported from the Andhra Pradesh, Orissa and West Bengal there are 10% of total marine landings Bombay duck fishery is uh, contributing to more, total marine fisheries is about 10% that is how much big quantity we can see that is the single bombay duck species contribute about 10% of the total marine fisheries or marine landings the important landing centers in uh, Maharashtra is uh, Varsova, Satpati, Vasai, Arnala, Uttan, Murbai and Dahano these are the most important landing centers where the bombay ducks are uh, landed or cached in Gujarat, Porbandar, Veraval, Navabandar Chaprabad and Rajpara are the, the, the landing center where the landings of the Bombay ducks are occur. Thus, this, the Bombay duck fishery is the most important fishery. It is contribute to the 10% of the total marine fishery. Out of 100% Bombay duck fishery, the single species 9 
that is harpodon nerys is most important fishes which caught all over india and mostly in maharashtra and gujarat coast and in these landing centers of the maharashtra and gujarat before mechanization and modernization of the fishing crafts and gear the it is fisheries catched from the 7 to 10 fathoms only now after mechanization it is the catches or the nets are obtained up to the 25 fathoms and this mechanization increase the production by the 7.1% after mechanization nowadays there is observation are made by scientists in commercial catches there is a size average size of the fishes is that reduced from 221 mm in 1959 to 60 to 145 mm in 1972-73 that is the may be due to the high pressure catching pressure on the fishes and fishes are unable to uh, grow it is uh, catching earlier due to this mechanization and uh, this uh, modernization of the fishing traps and gears so the size of the average size of the catching size of is reduced to from 221 mm to 145 mm now we will discuss the traps and gears used for the bombay duck fishery traps are nothing but the platform or boats which is used to stay in the water body and gear are the equipments or nets which is used to catch the fishes there are uh, many types of nets are used to catch the bombay duck fishery as in uh, west coast as well as east coast the bag net or dole net on west coast in maharashtra and gujarat that is the most important bag net which is called as a dole net commonly in uh, west coast which is particularly used in maharashtra and gujarat the gill net or khandari net is used in gujarat also then behundi jal or fixed bag net is used in estuaries of bengal and matla river in west bengal and boats in notes are boats in nets are used in andhra and orissa ports these are the four types of gears are used particularly to catch the bombay duck fishery these are the dole net which is used in west coast that is particularly in maharashtra and gujarat here it is operated in depth varying from 15 to 50 meters the operation being carried out at a greater depth as a season advances the net is tied either to stout wooden poles or a stick ropes anchored with heavy stones facing the tidal flow here we can see these are the bamboo or poles or wooden poles not bamboo poles heavy stout wooden poles are fixed and net are fixed to the that poles opposite to direction of the tidal flow it is hauled at up and catch it is emptied at the time of slack during the change of tide these are the see how much that is a 56 meter long this is bombay uh, dole net is there it is a fixed to the two stout wooden poles or it is also anchored with some time with stones and floats and the mouth the gap mouth gap of the dole net is 30 mm width and height is about 18 mm 30 meter width and 18 meter width and length of the uh, dole net is about 56 meter and here we can see this is the cord end that's and here we see the mesh size is higher here and up to the cord end the mesh size is decreasing and in between the transition period of the tide that is changing tide they can empty the catches the all these are bombay duck when moving uh, with these catches they will capture in this dole net and it is uh, emptied from this cord end at particular interval 
object types and again we put set opposite to the direction of the tidal flow net is again pile facing to the change direction of the tides in gujarat the gill net this called as kandiran is operated in the tail mile zone between the kosambo and kola in andhra pradesh the boat scenes that is operated from the boat that is seen there which is called as the irigela irigevala which is called as irigevala are operated by two catamarans during the july to november period fixed bag net are used in orissa coast which is called as a bhumindi chow which is used in the issues of west bengal from october to june now we will discuss the disposal of the bombay duck bombay duck is particularly we seen it is available in a large quantity in a season that's why it is a disposal also very difficult it is a highly perishable fish because it contain high moisture or moisture content water content of the bombay duck is high that the proximate composition just we can see the moisture content is 89.30% protein is 9.10% fat is 0.70% and ash is 0.90% that is we can see the water content is very high that is why it is a highly perishable fish it is consumed in fresh condition then only otherwise it will get spoil easily it is mostly sold in fresh condition in local market the rest is sun dried drying is done on a series of raised bamboo scap folding where two bombay ducks are locked together with their lower jaws into an and hung on one on each side of the row here we can see clearly the bombay ducks are entwined with their lower jaws the lower jaws entangle with each other and these are hang on the rope or any bamboo which is erased on this side the dried and tied bundles of 140 or thousands are marketed to the inland area of the india some portion of the catches also go for the manual preparation also as uh, uh bad quality bombay duck if you, you spoil then they go for the manual preparation also here are we can see the bamboo uh, poles are erected here and some ropes are tied and to this rope these bombay ducks are hung by entering their lower jaw that is to bomb bombay duck are entangled with their lower jaw and hung on this rope for sun drying and after that the bundle of 140 number or 1000 numbers are made and it is transported to the inland areas for in a dried condition for marketing purposes thus friends we discuss the bombay duck fishery transform the introduction taxonomy description distribution food and feeding habits reproduction maturity minimum size fecundity spawning season then age of growth and the importance of fishery and its contribution to total marine fisheries traps and care used for fisheries and disposal of the bombay duck fishery if you like this video please subscribe the channel also promote the channel also share the videos thank you we will meet in next video thank you once again